Hello and welcome back everyone to another tutorial on Tutor LMS Academy. Today we have a very exciting video. We're going to go over the all new incredible Tutor LMS's native e-commerce. Setting up the native e-commerce in Tutor LMS is pretty easy. So let's get started. First of all, we need to go to Tutor LMS settings and in the monetization tab, we need to enable native monetization. So from the e-commerce engine dropdown, select native hit save changes, and this will activate Tutor LMS's built-in e-commerce features. A quick tip, if you're switching from a third-party e-commerce engine, don't forget to regenerate the Tutor LMS pages. So for that, simply head over to Tutor LMS, tools, tools, Tutor pages, and then click regenerate pages. Anyways, back to the monetization settings page. We can set a card page. So this is where learners can view their card. Make sure that this page is created and published on your WordPress site. Then select your checkout page. Same thing as before. This is where your transactions will be processed. Again, ensure that the page is properly set up on WordPress. Following that, we have some additional monetization settings that comes with the Tutor native e-commerce. You can set a currency symbol, you can set the currency position, thousand separator, and a bunch of other small edits to be made. Anyways, so after setting up the e-commerce engine to Tutor, the next step would be to set up a payment gateway. So go to the payment methods tab. At the moment of recording, Tutor LMS has seven payment gateways available and you can install all of them or just the ones that you want intend to be using. After you install it, you need to set it up from the payment methods website. So you would need to have a client ID, secret ID and all that stuff to make sure that the setup works. Now, since these setups are a bit lengthy, we will actually have separate videos on how to enable and set up each of these seven payment gateways in upcoming videos. So please be sure to watch those if you want to find out how to set up the payment methods. Apart from the payment gateways, you can also configure a manual payment method. So let's say if you have some sort of a bank transfer, you can provide your details here. You can even upload images. So maybe like a QR code to directly transfer money to your account. We'll, we'll go ahead and set up a manual payment method. We'll call this bank transfer. So this is where you would set the title so that you would know what this transfer is for or this manual payment method is for. And then we can have some instructions providing our account details so that customers can actually transfer the amount. But we'll just call it bank transfer as well. Any manual payment that you add will be denoted by this icon. So moving on, we have tax configuration. This comes with the native e-commerce engine for Tutor LMS. So all of these settings actually, the payment methods, taxes and checkouts will not be here if you're using some other third party e-commerce engine. So anyways, in the tax tab, you can add a tax region. So let's go ahead and click this. Now you'll see this pop-up that lets us choose a country or its specific province. So let's say if we have the United States, you can individually select the provinces that you only want to apply taxes to. Or if you click on the country itself, this checkbox, this will select the entire country. So let's go ahead and select this, hit apply. And you can see that we have the entire country added. So all of the provinces under this country will have the same tax rate applied if we applied to them. So let's go ahead and add a tax rate. So when we go to the edit menu, we can still configure individual province based taxes. Or if we check this box, apply single tax rate for the entire country, then we can just set one tax rate for the whole region. For the sake of this video, we're just giving an example value here, but please make sure to research accurate tax rates for the regions that you're going to be adding tax for. So we'll just, we'll just go ahead and set this to 10% just for the sake of this video. And then we can move on to the next part, which is the global tax settings. 
So in this section, you can decide how your taxes are applied. So you have two options here. One that says tax is already included in my prices. And the other one says tax should be calculated and displayed on the checkout page. So if you select the first one, this means that if your product is $10 and the tax is $1, then you have made the course $11 because you calculated the tax yourself and included the total price as the price of the course. If you select this, then you would set the price of the course as $10 and TutorLMS would calculate the tax and display the total amount during checkout. So when buying the course, students would see that it's $10. At checkout, they would see that 10% tax has been added and then it would be 10 plus one, $11 as the total price. And lastly, if you check this box, display prices inclusive of tax. So, so this would mean that on the course details page, on the course pricing, the pricing would show that the price is inclusive of tax. So they would see the whole amount and they would know that there is tax included in that amount and the course isn't just actually that expensive. So anyways, we'll go ahead and select tax should be calculated and we'll display our prices inclusive of tax and we'll hit save changes. Okay, so we're done with taxes and now we can go to the next tab, which is the checkout tab. So on the checkout tab, you only have one option, a toggle that says enable coupon code. If we toggle this on, that means that we are going to be allowing our users to apply coupon codes during checkout. So let's go and create a coupon for our courses so that students can use them. These are some new tabs that TutorLMS has with the native e-commerce. So now from right from within TutorLMS, you have a whole new coupon option. So if you go to the coupons tab on this table, you'll be able to see all the coupons you have created. Since we have none, we'll go ahead and add a new coupon. So let's set up our coupon. First, let's fill out our coupon info. So we can select the method. We can either have students input manually a coupon code or we can make it automatic where whatever course we apply this coupon to it will automatically apply the discount at the checkout but let's go ahead with code so we'll call this tutor lms sale this will be the title of our coupon and you can see on the preview on the right this shows what our coupon will look like and then you can set a coupon code now you can set one yourself or you can just generate a random code for students. Let's go ahead and call this coupon code TutorLMS. Next up, we come to the discounts. So you can choose what type of discount you want to enable for this coupon. So you can either have percentage discount or a flat amount discount. We'll set this to percentage and we'll say it's 10% off. Now you can select where this coupon code applies to. You can either have it apply to all courses, all bundles, all courses and bundles, and you can also specify to have it set to specific courses, bundles, or category. So if we set it for a specific course, then we'll get the option to add it to a specific course. Now, let's say if you add it to this course, since this course has an existing sale, this coupon is actually not going to be applicable for this course because this already has a sale. So you can't get a sale on top of a sale. We'll go ahead and just apply it to all courses. So if a course has a discount, the coupon code won't be applicable. If it doesn't have a discount, then we'll get a discount on the base price of the course. And we can move on to the next section, usage limitation. So here you can limit the number of times this coupon can be used in total and the number of times this coupon can be used by one customer. So if you enable this, let's say you have a scenario where you want to enable the coupon code for the first 100 students who purchase the course. So you would enable this and set the number to 100. And you want to allow a student to use this coupon code only once. So you would set the number to one and you can see this change reflected on the preview. And then you can set a minimum purchase requirement. So if you set a minimum purchase amount, that means that you can set a number. So let's say $10. That means that a student would need to purchase at least a course worth of $10 to be able to use this coupon. You can also set a minimum quantity of courses. So let's say if we set it to two, that means that they need to have two courses in their card to be able to use the coupon. But we'll set this to no minimum purchase requirement. And lastly, you can set up the validity of the coupon. So let's say we'll set it 
to a date. And then once you select the date and time, you can set an end date. So let's say since we selected the 28th here, we can select this. And that means that this coupon will be active for one week. And if you don't select an end date, that means that this coupon will be valid indefinitely. And we're done with our coupon setup. Now you can see all the changes on the preview. So we can see that this coupon is called Tutor Elmas Sale. It's a 10% off coupon. This is the coupon code. What type of coupon it is. It's a 10% off of all courses and the details of the coupon. And it also shows you if the coupon is currently active or not. So after we're done with all of that, we can hit save changes and we can see our coupon here. Okay, so we've set up most of the things. We have one more tab to explore, which is the orders tab. But let's go ahead and make an order first. So I'm logged in here as a student and we're trying to purchase this course, right? So, so let's go ahead and add this course to our cart. So here we are at the cart and we'll go to proceed checkout. And here we have an option to add our coupon. So we can click here on this text box. We'll paste the coupon code that we have. We'll click apply and then we can see that our coupon code has been added successfully and we have a discount and this also shows the name of the coupon on here as well so we, we're not gonna bother too much about those details but we need to select the country so since we set our tax to be applied to all regions of the United States. Let's go ahead and select that. And right away, you can see that the tax gets applied right here. But if I select a different, different region, then the tax is gonna go away because we did not set a tax amount for this region. And lastly, if we see the payment method, since we didn't enable any of the payment gateways, we only see our manual payment method. So since in the instructions part, we only wrote bank transfer, this is what's showing here. But if you add instructions and details for your manual payment method, this is where it would show up. So now if we go back to our backend, we can see that there is a notification dot beside orders. That means that we have an order here. Now, since this is a manual payment method, the payment status says unpaid or incomplete so we would have to manually process this payment on the order you would actually see all your orders appear here so we go to click on edit and we can see every bit of detail about this order and we can now configure this so we can see that which course it is for all the information regarding our student and the breakdown of the the total price so we can click on this button to mark mark it as paid right away but there's another button here called add a discount what you can do is you can offer special discounts for students so you can add a set discount value for this specific student and you would need to put in a discount reason for this course so now if you apply this we'll see that this student will get an additional discount. But what happens if they've already paid this amount? So now the student will actually get an update on his end and he will see that they only need to pay this amount to complete the payment. So once you've confirmed with the student that the payment has been complete, we'll select mark as paid. So this reconfirms again, mark is paid if you have manually received the amount we'll go ahead and mark it as paid and now the order has been paid and completed right away on tutor lms now if for some reason you want to refund this course you can also do it from this tab so you would select refund and on the refund pop-up you can see how much the student has paid so this is the total amount that you can refund to the student and you would need to put a reason for this refund. Let's actually put in the whole amount and we'll give a reason that this course is filled up. So we can't take any more students on this course. And lastly, because we can't enroll this course anymore, we'll remove the student from the enrollment as well. And now if we click on refund, it will completely refund the student and they will be auto unenrolled from the course. And you can see all the order updates or order activities from here. If you want any extra comments, for this order you can place it here and other admins would be able to see this so they can understand what was going on with this order and lastly you can also completely cancel this order from here and if you want to cancel the order you need to provide a reason for the cancellation but we'll go ahead and keep the order and now if we come to the order tab we can see that the payment status is paid and the order is completed that means the student is now enrolled into this course and well there you have it everyone that was a quick rundown of how to set up the tutor lms's native e-commerce engine this 
Native e-commerce of TutorLMS is actually tied to a lot of other features like the orders, coupons, and the native subscriptions that TutorLMS has. And we will be coming out with more videos on those, how the subscription system works, how you can integrate the payment gateways. So be sure to stay tuned for that. If you face any issues during this setup, be sure to let us know in the comments below. And as always, have a good one, everyone. Thank you.